vendor advocates. And again, this is something that fair trading have pushed information out to consumers. And, you know, they talk about it and they talk about it being a relatively new service. Well, I guess it's been around for a while, but it is being talked about more predominantly at the moment. And uh, so that's about a service where people are assisting vendors to either get their property ready for sale or talk them through and hold their hand through the sale process. So many vendors would find that a significant assistance through the process because it's not something they do regularly. So, you know, that assistance, mind you, I think that a selling agent can educate and bring along a buyer, a vendor for the for the journey as well because, you know, that's part of the process of including them into your whole uh, strategy and journey for what you're actually doing. So, uh, but it's really good that the vendor also understands how the vendor's advocates paid for their services. So, you know, that's... That's part of, they often won't understand that because some vendor advocates don't charge for their a fee from the vendor. However, they're paid generally from, from you as the vendor's selling agent uh, via sharing commission or a referral fee. Now, here we get into a, a, a topic, a, a very interesting topic and one that we've actually been talking about in CPD elective for, for salespeople this, for the last, well, 11 months and one, one week really. So... Um, minus or a whole year minus 21 days. Uh, so some vendor advocates are licensed real estate agents. Many are not. And now that can lead to fines for the vendor's agent if they're paying the advocate. Because, you know, as we've been, as I said, we've been discussing this all, all year in uh, elective CPD, pursuant to Section 33 of the Property and Stock Agents Act, a licensee cannot share commission with certain persons. So that's an agent cannot share commission with someone who is not also a licensed agent or working under a licensed entity. So what the Section 33 of the Act actually states is that a licensee must not enter into an arrangement with with or act in conjunction with a person, so that's working with a vendor's agent, a vendor's advocate, uh, with a person that the licensee knows to be an unlicensed person. So obviously, if the, somebody is um, certificated and working under a licensed entity, then that, that's fine. You're, you're dealing with a licensed entity in terms of the business, whereby that unlicensed person is entitled to share of the commission a, a fee of any sort, a reward, whether it's in kind, respect, or any transaction uh, that they have as a licensee generally. Now, there are penalties associated with that, 100 penalty units in the case of a corporation, 50 in the case, units in any other case. Now, that's, you know, 11,000, 5,500. So, you know, they're, they're large fines or maximum fines uh, that can be associated with a breach of this section of the Act. What does a non-licensed person mean? It means a person who's not licensed under the Act or any other corresponding Act. So, you know... Um, Licensees pro prohibited from entering into any agreements that re that will result in that commission being paid. So I mean, you know, we can say it. I mean, obviously, the regular the um, property and stock regulation actually uh, exempts livestock from this situation. But uh, you know, generally, the vendor's agent should also be able to answer the questions from a vendor or prospective vendor in relation to the role of the vendor's advocate because that's going to be questions that you're asked. So it's not, it's really, it's not a good look. It's not a professional look. If you're saying, oh, I don't know how they, how they work here. I don't know what they do. Well, it's about, well, okay, sit with your vendor if they ask you the question. Let's have a look and see if they're licensed. Let's have a look and see how we work with them. And when it comes down to it, just say, well, look, I can't pay this person because they're not a licensed agent. So they may well be looking to you to get paid. You need, you as a vendor, need to ask that question of your vendor's advocate. So putting that back there, because at the end of the day, you need to be seen as the professional agent who's providing the professional services if you want to continue to get uh, listings and continue to be seen as the professional in your local sphere of influence. So really important that you know who the vendor advocates are, if your vendors are using them and how they operate. And if they're going to come and ask you for a share of your commission uh, at the end of the deal. And you mightn't even know they exist until partway through and you had no idea 
what was going on. So if there's any mention of it from the vendor, that's when you need to start looking at the, the situation a little bit more deeply and investigating whether they are licensed or whether they are not. So guys, just a little warning there that it is becoming more common. And again, vendors are becoming more wary and, uh, and asking for more assistance in terms of which agent they go to. So very much like the topic we were talking about before. Thank you.